All right. Hello, folks. We're together with Heidi Hernlein and Mark Davenport. I, Lawrence Gold, and we're going to be doing an exploration of certain variations of the Tetra Seed modulations called the Spell Maker Breaker. And uh, here's a bit of a description. The Spellmaker Breaker is a pair of incantations composed of elements of the Tetra Seed, attending, imagining, intending, and remembering, either to construct or deconstruct an experience. Construct is another word for manifest, and deconstruct is another word for dissolve. In manifesting or dissolving, order or sequence makes a difference in terms of how we use the Tetra Seed. So for manifesting or constructing, we use the following order. And I'm going to give you uh, first to state the order and then give you an example of how you would apply it. So <clears throat> the order is attending, imagining, intending, remembering. And it's a feel thing. When we do the other version for deconstructing, you'll be able to feel the difference. So first you identify the desired experience to yourself. And in this example, we'll use personal integrity as the desired experience. And you put your attention on the feeling, whatever feeling you have of it, not your mental analysis or definition, but what you feel when you think or say the words personal integrity. That's what we're working with. And so you do it thusly. You attend to imagining personal integrity imagine intending personal integrity, intend remembering personal integrity, remember attending to personal integrity. <clears throat> and you keep cycling in that sequence until you get the feeling of the desired result. And that feeling will be recognizable, obviously, because it uh, resonates in a place in you that has recognition of the thing. It's a felt recognition. So that said, uh, Mark and Heidi are invited to choose their desired item. Yeah. They don't need to say it to us. They may if they wish, but this kind of procedure doesn't require that you talk out your internal life. You can keep privacy if you wish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we'll be doing is first the manifesting or constructing form that will give you all an experience of that way of feeling. And then you'll choose another item and we're going to deconstruct it with a different sequence, which I will disclose to you when the time is right. So, are you two ready? Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, here we go. Attend to imagining your item. Okay. Imagine intending your item. Intend remembering your item. Remember attending to your item. Attend to imagining your item. Imagine intending your item.
intend remembering your item. Remember attending to your item. Attend to imagining your item. Imagine intending your item. Intend remembering your item. Remember attending to your item. Okay, let's check in. What happened? Um, sometimes I, I felt very little response and occasionally great ag agreement <laughs> with it. Yes, a sort of uh, spontaneous identification. Yes, this is, this is it. This is it. And uh, uh, I was surprised that it happened only like one in four times. I wish I could recall just which combination, you know, made it happen, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I can't actually. Mm -hmm. it is, but very spotty, very spotty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me it was a little bit difficult in the sense that I, I was a little bit outside of all that. Mm -hmm. It was like if it is, I see somebody else <laughs> doing that. Mm -hmm intending, attending, and these things, but it was it was not really connected with me. Can be because I, we were disturbed before we began the broadcast that I was still not yet. I don't know, maybe. Okay. So that's also been my experience, what Mark called spotty, and not being quite in it mm -hmm. or into it, and that is in probably in large part because it's a very primitive simple application of the tetraseed structure but also because different facets of the tetraseed produce more or less of the content they're connected with so some of them will have much more accessible content and others will bring up a blank doesn't matter you just keep on going on um, my question right now is, did you feel the item firm up for you or clarify? Um, I, I, I can say that, yes, there, there, there's, there, there's some direction, some uh, um, solidification. I don't know. Uh, uh, there, there's something here that I definitely want to go toward and respond. And it, it, yeah. I wouldn't say that I felt it. I had this more as a as a vision, more as a you know, it's connected with feeling, but it was more uh, imagination than physical yeah, feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe okay. because I was not really inside. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so let's now do a procedure. <clears throat> to wake up the four facets of the tetra seeds rather better and then we'll do another set of three of this spell maker. Now you can tell you've helped the beginnings of the spell occurring, the spell being the captivating of your attention in the item itself. But mm -hmm. you know, two things, the instructions say keep doing it until you get the result and you didn't yet. But I want to introduce uh, this preparatory step and see as I expect it will whether it speeds and intensifies the effectiveness of this little procedure. So I'll coach you through it. Okay, and then 
important uh, when Heidi is ready. Yes? Okay, mm -hmm. it's going to go like this. Attend to attending. Mm -hmm. Imagine attending. Mm -hmm. Intend attending. Remember attending. Okay. Imagine imagining. Mm -hmm. Intend imagining. Mm -hmm. Remember imagining. Attend to imagining. Intend intending. Remember intending. Attend to intending. Imagine intending. Remember remembering. Attend to remembering. Imagine remembering. Intend remembering. Good, let's check in. How'd that go? Yeah, um, I could feel that. Yep, there's feelings, especially with intending. Yeah, and the remembering and the imagining, they had all a different yeah. flavor. Yes, each was different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So you ready to run through now the constructing or manifesting spell maker? Same item. What we'll be looking for is a faster, larger change. Okay. Attend to imagining your item. Imagine intending your item. Intend remembering your item. Remember attending to your item. Attend to imagining your item. Imagine intending your item. Intend remembering your item. Remember attending to your item.
attend to imagining your item. Imagine intending your item. Intend remembering your item. Remember attending to your item. Okay, now let's check in. How'd that go? This was better. Yeah. Yeah, this was much more felt in yeah. itself. <clears throat> uh, uh, very, very conscious activity. Very linear. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. But it take, it takes, take the, the, the three steps from... <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. But dum, dum, dum. each was felt. Each was felt. Mm -hmm. What in terms of result have you experienced then? The result which I feel now is sort of more, I don't know if it's the right word, more confidence or it's a different feel in myself. Yeah. I'm in a different space than I was before. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I, I have a handle on the item that I didn't before. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So it looks like that preparatory step is necessary. You got to sharpen the tool before you apply it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when in using the spell maker breaker, you always proceed then with the basic preparatory step of waking up the tetra seed, your sense of it, mm -hmm. out of merely word mind, <clears throat> out of merely word mind into felt condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is important because yeah. before it was more word mm -hmm. mind. Yeah, you can. I still have the word mind, though. So, you know, I in German, I I tell me tell to me the what you say. I sort yeah. of translate it and then yes. it's easier for me. Sure. <laughs> okay. Well, now let's do the deconstructing part, the spell breaker. And again, a spell is anything that enchants or captures or captivates us to the point that we feel enclosed or trapped or stuck in it. We're under the spell. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we've already done the preparation. But I think I want to do another set of the preparation for the spell breaker just to re-anchor back into that without the influence of the first procedure. Okay. All right. Different. That got broken up in transmission. What was it? If this is a, re a related item, the same item, or, or, or different one for this? Yeah, I, let me ponder that for a moment. I think it'd be interesting to do the same item because you firmed it up. It'll be mm -hmm. very clear then if you've dissolved it back because, in fact, that is the process we go through in every phase of life. We go through creation preservation and dissolution. That's the natural order. What we're doing now is making that conscious and deliberate. So take the same item okay. and are you both ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to run through the focusing each of the facets of the Tetra Seed and then do the deconstructing process. And before we do that, I'm going to introduce it. So just using the example of falsehood as something we want to dissolve or deconstruct, you put your attention on it, 
and you do it this way. You attend to remembering falsehood. You remember intending falsehood. You intend imagining falsehood. You imagine attending to falsehood. So, as an incantation, this involves repetition. You cycle through the four elements repeatedly until you clear up confusion and internal contradiction and you either get an immediate experience of the dissolution or all charge on that condition. The item disappears and you're left with the experience of voidness. Voidness is the absence of something. The experience of voidness is not a sign of failure. It's a sign that you have removed all contradiction or internal opposition or dissolved the thing itself. Internal opposition is what gives the sense of substantiality to an experience. Without opposition, experience is experienced as no experience or voidness. Voidness is the essence of one's natural or original state. Okay. <clears throat> now the reason that uh, contradiction or internal opposition is necessary to give sub a sense of substantiality to an experience is because we experience everything by means of contrasts. And it can be any kind of contrast. It doesn't need to be the duality of opposites. It can be any contrasting pair. It can be very similar. As long as it's not so similar that you can't tell the difference, there'll be contrast and there'll be an experience. And when you remove contrast, the thing just plain old ceases to exist for you. So internal opposition is opposition is putting something in uh, contrasting relation to something. Without that, no experience. And we're going to be dissolving that now. So are you ready? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you might take the feeling you're in, Heidi. <laughs> that one is no, the I'm, st still, I'm still a little bit pondering of your, all your words you have said. Oh, well, feed back a question then. Let's clear out your attention. <clears throat> I didn't get so much, was this falsehood thing, was it an example or has it to do now with the process? It's just an example of how to apply the process. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, there, I think it's a good one to apply. You know, falsehood and personal integrity would be a good pair to clean up. But that was just an example for the purpose of explanation. Okay. Yeah. Are we ready? Using the item that you created mm -hmm. the first time, here we go. So attend to remembering that item. Remember intending that item. Intend imagining that item. Imagine attending to that item. Attend to remembering that item. Remember intending that item. Intend imagining that item. Imagine attending to that item.
attend to remembering that item. Remember intending that item. Intend imagining that item. Imagine attending to that item. Okay, let's check in. What happened for you? Uh, I could slip through all of those positions quite easily. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally, forgetting the item, <laughs> but going through the uh, from from the one position to the other easily. Much much more fluidity in in, in the in the in the action. Okay. For me, instead, uh, I mean, it was easy, but they appeared real when you said remember uh, intending, for instance. I, I remembered real moments mm -hmm. uh, in my life. When, mm -hmm. uh, and, and when the other was attend to imagining, mm -hmm. I had a feel of as I imagine it now, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was more real life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in a, in a, it's always in this sort of meditative state in which I feel to be now. Mm. Okay. So did its force increase, decrease, stay the same, or disappear? Yeah. What what is what what do you refer your your question to? to the yes. item that you were. Ah, uh, the item. To. Oh, that's a result I have to see in the future. <laughs> I don't know. Well. Yeah. Okay, but in terms of your your feeling of being trapped or caught in it, is it more or less the same or gone? For me, it's much less charged. Yeah. Ah, you see it in this sense. I was mm -hmm. thinking uh, what that means. Yeah, it was... I began I'm with more more tranquil around yeah, it. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, okay. Okay, yeah. good. And that was the intended result. And we mm -hmm. did I don't even remember if it was two or three. I started losing it myself coaching you. I felt <laughs> I felt the field effect intensify and suddenly I couldn't remember if we'd been done two or three. I think two. That was the intention of the exercise. <laughs> That was a side effect, but you know, this was, it was real distinct to me. That field effect was like palpable. Mm -hmm. Unlike the very first time we cycled through before we did the preparatory yeah. step, I wasn't feeling the field effect at all. But mm -hmm. okay, so well, what we see is that even this very primitive application of the Tetra Seed works, but it needs the preparatory step of focusing the facets of the Tetra Seed before mm -hmm. we apply it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. It was mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah. All right. So um, the question is, do we have time and inclination to do the wish-fulfilling gem? Yeah. Yeah? Sure. Mark? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You got a wanna, as I like to say. Kind of this is, yeah, this might be a, a good stopping point, but in as much mm -hmm. as the wish fulfilling gem is a way more potent application of Tetra Seed than merely the spell maker, <laughs> the wish fulfilling gem re would call for a little bit of introductory explanation, but you got to be up for it. Okay, I would like to. Yeah, this fits right in with with my issue itself. So yeah, mine too. Because Good. it's a bit. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to call up the 
the write-up on the wish fulfilling gem so that I can use it as notes here. All right. <clears throat> so for the wish fulfilling gem, you use the wish fulfilling gem to redirect yourself in a preferred direction, generally after having done cleanup on an item with one of the other procedures. The wish fulfilling gem has a secret nature. It instills or evokes spontaneous wisdom as a result of the Tetra Seed modulating processes it entails. One aspect of Tetra Seed modulation is the full range or full spectrum result between existence and non-existence or virtual existence. From creating a vibratory harmonic that feels like the thing you want or dissolving virtually all trace of density in it so it feels equivalent to smoke hmm. or an insubstantial but recognizable hologram image virtually there but somehow feelingly equivalent to its absence it is only a trace but it's a clean trace mm -hmm. so the wish fulfilling gem procedure results in either a very clean virtual perception of the item desired or the disappearance of any charge you may have had on it or both in some degree of balance expect things disappearing and traces of new things appearing so every time you use the wish fulfilling gem it entails a lesson an awakening clarification a rising of intention and a growth process in unexpected directions Yeah. Exactly. So here we go. So, with the item you with which you choose to work, attend to that item. Mm-hmm attend to remembering that item remember imagining that item imagine attending to that item attend to imagining that item imagine remembering that item remember attending to that item attend to intending that item intend imagining that item imagine remembering that item remember intending that item intend remembering that item remember imagining that item
imagine intending that item. Intend attending to that item. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's check in. Restraint is difficult. Uh, I have to really concentrate on mm -hmm. following the thread. Um, couldn't remember why we were doing this. <laughs> uh, not sure where I am. Uh, not it's not puzzled. It's just up in a, in a in a state. Of um, no, 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 no pulls in any particular direction. Just a, an equilibrium mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, it was this remember, intending, attend to remembering. This was all easy, but what I should remember was ever <laughs> more far away. Mm -hmm. it, at the end, I didn't even know what it was, sort of. Mm -hmm. I had difficulty to rem remember what it was about. Mm -hmm. I could remember something, to intend something. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, I relate to that, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then there came the idea, I don't want to forget it because that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to forget what I want. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right away is an interesting set of words to say. You know, given the yes. first of the four noble truths, or the second of the four noble truths, and attachment. Is that third, second or third? I don't remember anyway. Well, the point being, though, in my narration, I talked about removal of opposition leading to the experience of voidness. Mm -hmm. There was nothing in the procedure that contradicted the item, nothing. Right? No. Every one of them was actually in its positive aspect. So what you've done is you've removed all opposition and made it identical to the experience of voidness, which may have some similarity to the saying, form is emptiness and emptiness is form. Now, Pedagogical I... trick, Lawrence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it is, or maybe it's a description of the actuality. When there's no internal contradiction, experience is felt as equivalent to no experience. No, I, I wasn't complaining. <laughs> okay, all right. But it wasn't, or on my part, it wasn't, what I discovered was what you're describing when I worked with it myself that way. So now you're going to have uh -huh. to look into your life process for the fruit of it. Because what you've done mm -hmm. is apparently rendered your item to be identical with formless consciousness. Mm -hmm. You've got to look now for its manifestation in life. How Hopefully this plays you out. haven't chased it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, no, I think what will happen is it will appear in a highly appropriate form because it's free of complications and entanglements now. Mm -hmm. But it may show up in a paradoxical form. Uh, this can only be evaluated in terms of your subsequent experience. We will see, we will tell you. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. That, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. So just to review what we've done in this session is show how in using the spell maker breaker we must do the preparatory step of awakening the felt experience of the tetra seed through that four step sequence. Well, it's actually, I think it's 12 steps, but it's four points. Yes. And then do the spell maker breaker. That's what we did. 
And then we followed with the wish fulfilling gem, which as you can see is a highly amplified version of the Spellmaker Breaker. It actually includes both in its own form so that you are at once, you might say, casting the spell and breaking it so that you're not caught by it. There's a <laughs> saying, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. <laughs> and Certainly. that saying makes you afraid to manifest anything. Whereas ah. this undermines that. This completely dissolves that kind of concern. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Anything more to ask or tell here? You know, while I'm doing these processes, I cannot tell a difference. I mean, in what you are saying, I'm, I, I cannot see that the first um, process was much different than the second mm -hmm. in what you are doing. It doesn't enter into my awareness. So. Is it the sequence which is different? What is it? Well, it's that in the Wish Fulfilling Gem, you do the sequence forward and then backward of three. Uh -huh. which, then you switch from, in this case, from attention and the two others to intention and the two others and do that forward and backward. Whereas in the Spell Maker Breaker, there is no backward. Uh -huh. So the structure is different. Of course, the elements are the same. They're the Tetra Seed. And so there are two differences. The Spellmaker Breaker is a structure of four. And mm -hmm. the Wish Fulfilling Gem is two structures of three connected. It's a different molecular structure. Molecular structure. That's, yeah. Uh, that's an interesting way of putting it. And it is. It's exactly a molecular structure. And, you know, in the structure of water, you have H2O, right? Yeah. You have two H's and an O, mm -hmm. and they form a triangle, just as with the wish-fulfilling gem. Mm -hmm. And in the polymerization of water, water molecules assemble into geometrical structures and chains by linking up. And they do so by linking up, uh, would probably be, say, the a, a positive hydrogen um, I, I, well, it's not an ion, the proton of the hydrogen yes. to the oxygen of a neighboring molecule. So you get them linking up by one to one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a polymerization structure. That's what it's called, polymer. Mm -hmm. Poly means more than one. Mm -hmm. And the wish fulfilling gem is a polymeric structure. And it links attention and intention. Mm -hmm. Another version, you would link memory and imagination. Yeah. So instead of going from attend to, uh, or from remembering attending to something, and then attending to intending it, you would go from attending to imagining something, and then imagining remembering it, and mm -hmm. then do the cycle. Mm -hmm. It has a, a different flavor. I haven't yet sorted out the difference between those two. I only know they're complementary, mm -hmm. but I haven't done enough experimentation with them to get a clear perception of their different virtues and their relationship. It's something that I or somebody will do because I think it's going to be another useful piece of information. Mm -hmm. It's possible that to do the wish fulfilling gem well, you've got to do both of its versions. Uh huh. Okay. Yes, it 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 sounds to me like, you know, something I I have not yet understood completely. No, well, I, neither I, have I. I, I, I that one. Yeah. Yeah. All I know is that they are. Anyway, I'm happy that you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go on. Well, I, as comp they are complementary I, I, I will, structures. Just as in yeah, chemistry, yeah. there's a right-handed version and a left-handed version of different sugars mm -hmm. and different proteins and so forth. There's a 
these are their complementary versions of the wish fulfilling gem. It's interesting, as you can see, there is a correlation with chemistry here. Yeah, yeah this I find yeah, so that's, that's so interesting that yeah. you're uh, mm -hmm. making this connection. Mm -hmm. This is yeah, but never occurred to me, you know. Because <laughs> I was thinking of it in terms of metaphor, but you're actually making a more yeah. uh, concrete link, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, has to do with structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but at the end, it's not really uh, strange when we know that it's everything is repeating itself, like <laughs> fractals in, in in reality. Why shouldn't it be that too? Yeah. you know. So structure yeah. is structure is structure. The same structures uh, mm -hmm. repeating in many things. Mm -hmm. Why not in the mental sphere? Certainly. You know? Yeah, this is this is wonderful. Yeah, this is. But I hadn't thought about it. Aha. Uh -huh. Doesn't occur when you are working with your with spirituality oh. or with interiority. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't think about these things, yeah. but it's it's really good. Uh -huh. But but I'm in a state now where I can contemplate that and, yeah, and be too. comfortable with it. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just as in the aqual structure, that matrix, there's the external forms such as chemistry, mm -hmm. and there's an internal form. This is an internal form. Yeah. Of structure within the aqua matrix, so or yeah. constituting the aqua matrix. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. It makes ever more sense, you know. This when you learn the aqua matrix, you learn it like a construct, and then you begin to fill it with, with sense. <laughs> yeah, fill it with mm -hmm. sense. <laughs> then yeah. you go from the flat version of the yeah. circle divided into four to the tetrahedral structure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then from the tetrahedral structure to a dynamic or pulsating tetrahedral structure. So we're bringing it to life, mm -hmm. the aqua matrix. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a good place for us to stop this little bit. Okay. So I will stop it. Okay. <laughs>